This world is so it's so fast, bro. Like money, this you gotta be this person. You gotta be here in five years. You gotta plan out, cause cause society tells us that we have to be this person. But some people forget to live in the moment. Yeah. Some people forget it actually. In order to be that person in five years, you gotta worry about who you're gonna become tomorrow. Yeah. The small things add up to the big person. I didn't just get here overnight. It mm -hmm. took me four years to get here, but it was the day to day things, the living in the present, executing the in the present, mm -hmm. what got me to where I want to be today. And we put so much emphasis on what's your five year plan, what's your three year plan. I'm like, what am I gonna do tomorrow? Like, what am I gonna work on today yeah. that's gonna help me get there? When people think so far, you get anxiety, you be stressed out, mm -hmm. and it and it and what you real what it don't realize it hurts you in the present because mm -hmm. it's like how can you worry about the future that's not here yet? The present is what the emotions gonna cause you to move or sit still. Yo, that's so real. So it's like it's like. I need. To, I don't want to think that far because I create a stress or a negative uh, connection. It's gonna. It's gonna. I'm gonna have paralysis analysis. I ain't gonna wow. make no decision. I'm gonna stay still. Yeah. And I gotta teach people like you can't think like that. Mm -hmm. you gotta take a day at a time. Yo. So most of the times we talk about breaking into tech, scaling in tech, and starting your own tech business. Let's be real. Most of the guests we talk to are people who broke into tech, like myself, which is totally dope, or they scaled, like I had the opportunity to do, which is also great. But the conversation that we wanna have are people who actually started their own tech business. And we've had some wonderful guests on here that have started tech business. Many of them are people that never actually worked in tech, which is cool. But one of the things that's of value is learning some things in this tech industry, learning about what's happening in the industry, staying up to date, but also being the type of person where you're able to start your own business, whether it's a tech business or you're leveraging the technology to grow your business and be successful. Our guest today that we have on here, Ty, is someone who, man, I met him recently. I'm, I'm going to talk in a second about, about like how we met and about why I was like, y'all, I really like this dude. I really rock with this dude, even though I don't know a lot about him. Uh, but first and foremost, y'all go ahead in the comments, uh, whether you're in a Patreon community or those that are watching this uh, later on when this airs on YouTube, go ahead and leave some virtual, some some clap emojis for our guest, Ty. Bro, thank you for being on here for uh, Texas Me Black. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having yeah, me. Bro, this has been a long time coming, though. It has been, bro. I'm glad to be here, man. Appreciate yeah. everything you're doing, bro. Hey, bro. So um, I was just kind of touching on like how we met and I've met a lot of dope people in the past year. Uh, again, as I always uh, tell y'all, like one of the things you'll notice is that when you start to make more money, whether it's through tech or it's through a business or through something else, nine times out of 10, you're going to find yourself connecting with other people that are doing dope stuff as well. And I've met a lot of cool people and a lot of good people. But I think Ty is one of the first people, bro. You're one of the first people that I've met where I was like, yo, this dude has like a big heart. And and it's like, I like rocking with people that are like about their paper. I like rocking people that are about their work ethic, all that stuff. But it's like, yo, at the end of the day, it's like if, if you're not around people that are just compact, like good people, compassionate people that's really trying to help people, it's like, man, you can start to lose yourself where everything just becomes about making money, just comes about being successful. And when we met, just hearing, just hearing your story, and I, I want y'all to know who he is and know like why I saw value in him being on here. Beyond the, the gems he's gonna drop, the the money he's helped many people make, is because like we were having a conversation about you were sharing a story about something recently where there was a there was a, essentially an investment. I'm gonna kind of paraphrase, but there was like a, an investment. You know what, bro? I, I actually want you to tell the story because I want people to really like hear. But go ahead. So we talk about the investment. Kind of remind. I kind of we talk yeah. about so much. Yeah, man. I know there was a lot. So yeah. so specifically, it was a story where there was an investment play that someone else put you onto it, mm. and then you hit. You were inspired by. You say, "Yo, this sounds great. It makes sense." You put some other people onto it. They invested. When it, it ended up being a bad investment, yeah. and you did something that you literally out of your own pocket like you went broke giving all the other people their money back yeah, man. and it's like when i heard that junk i was like because because that's not something people do usually people will be like oh dang y'all that's my bad but when i heard like when you explain that and i was like yo and just really like hearing your heart behind your why i was like yo that's wild like yeah. in, a, in a dope way so bro like you don't have to go too too in depth with like what that investment was what happens yeah. i know that was something different but like, bro, like, I guess what happened with that just on a high level and why did you give all those people their money yeah, back? Yeah, so basically, pocket? man, that was an investment opportunity that I actually spoke to my friends about. 
And you know I understood They had a little money But they ain't have a lot of money Or whatever But I yeah. understood That was like yo People always ask me bro Can I can I give you this And so you can do X, Y, and Z for me yeah. So sometimes I do Sometimes I don't This opportunity I felt it was a good opportunity yeah. So I told them about it So someone kind of like Put their last up Because they yeah. believed And trusted in me Yeah. So and When somebody does that Man I take that resp- I don't take that responsibility Lightly Yeah it, it wasn't what happened was the industry and the situation went left nobody it was no bad business involved yeah it's just that the business went left and the investment it went left yeah and everybody lost their money right mm-hmm. including me mm-hmm. so and they wasn't not they wasn't mad because i did explain to them the risk like anything in investment is is a risk that yeah look, even people think real estate is a good investment sometimes it can be but it also can go left i too. know people that the lost a lot of money in real estate you know house don't sell House can be finished. People run out of money. It's a various reason why investments go left. So, even though I knew that they wasn't upset with me, but like I knew it was somebody last, bro. Yeah. Like I knew, like, bro, this is they. They ain't have no money to pay their bills for the next month because they was waiting on this. They was waiting on return on this investment. So, bro, I, I couldn't sleep at night knowing there's like four of my friends, bro, and I knew that they would do anything for me or whatever. So, like, bro, I just was in a situation where literally, like, I even took an L. But I gave them back their money, bro. And I even ate. I gave them back their money. So I eat, I ate a bigger L. Yeah. And I just did it, bro. Cause so I you lost it. your money, but then also you you lost out extra money. You I lost out like extra money because I gave them back their money. And bro. and I just knew that. One thing with me, I, like we talk about money and everything, bro. Yeah. So you, if you got the right mindset, the discipline, execution, I'm always going to make money. I'm never exactly. going to stop learning. I'm always going to be coachable and things that. And then if everybody does not have the ability to make money. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people don't have the execution ability to create something that can other people can eat off of, right? Mm-hmm. God gave me that ability, bro. So I was like, okay, if I take this little L, I take this little L, I'm gonna make it back, right? Yeah. And I just gave a lot of them back their money, bro. And they, they was like, wow, bro, you ain't gotta do that, bro. I'm like, bro, I know you need it though. I know this was your last. Yeah. And so, bro, it was just on my heart to get it to him. So that's what I did. Bro, I love that so much, man, dude. Uh, bro, appreciate you. appreciate you for that, for you doing that. Uh I really hope you just y'all take that to heart in general. I mean, many of y'all that are in tech already, you're skilling in tech, whatever, whatever, wherever it is that you're at in life, make sure that you keep that type of heart and that type of mentality and stuff. Because yeah, you'll you'll make a lot of money. You'll see a lot of people making money. But one, you want to make sure that you're always a person that still is looking out for people. You're putting people before the money, and you know, and that really you're becoming the type of person, like he said, that you're becoming the type of person where you know, okay, hey, look, I'm going to look out for those because I know that God has put me in a position to where I'm going to continue to attract money and make more money. And so let me make sure that I'm still taking care of other people. Uh, so, bro, thank you for that, man. We have a lot of conversations on here about money. And obviously, we're going to get into the money. We're going to get into yeah. different things within the business. But I think it's really important for people to to hear something like that and just kind of be reminded of that. Yeah, of course, man. So it's like you always this world. It's so, it's so fast, bro. Like, Money this, you gotta be this person, you gotta be here in five years, you gotta plan out cause cause society tells us that we have to be this person, but some people forget to live in the moment. Yeah. Some people forget it actually in order to be that person in five years, you gotta worry about who you're gonna be calling tomorrow. Yeah. The small things add up to the big person. I didn't just get here overnight. It mm-hmm. took me four years to get here. But it was the day to day things, the living in the present, executing the in the present mm-hmm. what got me to where I wanna be today. And we put so much emphasis on What's your five year plan? What's your three year plan? I'm like, what am I gonna do tomorrow? Like, what am I gonna work on today yeah. that's gonna help me get there? So a lot of people, we we skip that and we bring out and with that and we when people think so far, you get anxiety, you be stressed out, mm-hmm. and it and it and what you real what it don't realize it hurts you in the present because mm-hmm. it's like how can you worry about the future that's not here yet? The present is what the emotion is gonna cause you to move or sit still. Yo, that's so real. So it's like it's like I need to, I don't want to think that far because. I create a stress or a negative a negative uh, connection. It's gonna it's gonna I'm gonna have paralysis analysis. I ain't gonna wow. make no decision. I'm gonna stay still. Yeah. And I gotta teach people like you can't think like that. Mm-hmm. You gotta take it a day at a time. Yeah. I love that so much because yeah, just that that bar you drop where it's like yo, you could be so stressed out about something in the future that it's unpredictable. Yeah. But it's like it uh, that stress affects your performance right now. Right now, that, that, and that, yeah, performance right now is everything. Yeah. At this moment, at this time, is everything. Yo, gonna make it for you. That's so real. So, all right. So we, we we touched on okay, looking into the future, making sure that you're not allowing your future, you're not stressing out so much about your future to where it affects you now. Let's rewind back and let's talk about the past. Like, bro, who who were you before your before your 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 mega successful business before you even being in tech? Like, bro, 
who were you like what was your life like what was your your journey and some of your experience that rocked you and caused you to be like yo i need a change in my life my environment man bro i grew up i'm country people don't even realize that i really grew up if, if y'all can't country, tell bro. if y'all can't tell <laughs> like i really you can hear it in my voice i grew up super country bro i grew up on a farm man i grew up like in a in a trailer with like 16 people in it bro Dang. and like parents making 16 17 thousand dollars a year because like i live like that bro uh and but you, when you in in a space like that, you really don't realize. Yeah, you don't realize it. family and stuff. Yeah. I, don't, I don't realize like I'm wearing this, I'm wearing the same clothes, I'm recycling clothes uh, every every five or six days. Yeah. You feel me? Like you don't realize that. Yeah, you think I don't it's realize that. I'm, I'm like, it, yeah, I don't realize it is because that's my environment. Yeah. I didn't see the outside world, and bro, I really was like chasing chickens, bro. Like really, like helping my grandma shell peas, like to eat for Sunday dinner, bro. So I grew up with those. With those like country and those different type of morals about mm -hmm. how to be a man, how to be how to move with integrity mm -hmm. and building character, and I learned that. And it's so crazy. Like nowadays in society, people don't spend time with their their. So our, our parents before us really grew up with character, right? Because you didn't have all the extra uh, connections, all the extra things that society brings today. You didn't have all that yeah. emotions that society brings back in the days. Our parents like use in. Most kids back in the days, uh, uh, sons was in the field with their dad. Yeah, daughters was home cooking, cleaning with their mom. Yeah, so you learn different type of, uh, you you have different type of upbringings, mm -hmm. right? So with that type of upbringing I had in the country, that's what made me had a heart that I had today. Yeah, I watched I watched my granddad the way he treated my grandmother with like mm -hmm. love and kind. I watched how my grandma treated people. I grew up in the church, right? So yeah. I experienced a different type of. I didn't grow up on survival. I didn't grow up, you know. Everybody else always it's bad environments, whatever. But like mm -hmm. I didn't, I'm not gonna say in line. So I just grew up watching people get killed and all that stuff like that. Yeah. But it just taught. It's the way I brought up. Like I said, those morals and characteristics kind of like it, it shaped me. Mm -hmm. And like when I say dirt poor, bro, I mean dirt poor. Yeah. And it's like that kind of just you know I understand. I used to watch MTV Cribs a lot growing up, <laughs> and it kind of inspired me to let me know that there was something else out here. Yeah. It was. It was like yo. It, it just inspired me to be. To do something, yeah, right, and it was like, I want to be able to be that person in my family to break generational curses, right? To be that first millionaire, or even at time, I was just like, I want to be successful because I was just like, I grew up around a lot of love, yeah. So I was like, I want to like be able to give back to the people that like make sure I had a roof over my head, yeah, and, and food to eat. You know, it's wild, and I, I ain't trying to jump too too far ahead right now, but what's wild is how you talk about you're like, yo, I want to break the generational curses. I want to be the first family millionaire. I was watching MTV Cribs, looking at these these mansions. And all three of those things are things you've done. Like, yeah. you recently just bought your mansion. Yeah. And, bro, it's so crazy. People drop, like, I, I was outside today in the past couple of days. Bro, at least five or six people, bro, drive by the house, get out the car, and start taking pictures, bro. Oh, your crib. I swear, they be like, yo, oh, this is your house. Oh, that's what you like, know yeah, your house, bro. Fire. I just be like, I ain't really fine. Yeah. So they be like, yo, this house, see, like, I ride by. They're like, can I take a picture? I'm like, y'all even let someone like, they're like, can I look inside of it? Because I understand it might inspire somebody. Yeah. So I was just like, you know, I know they ain't mean no harm or whatever. Yeah. So, bro, I mean, at least like five or six people a day, bro. Bro. And I'm sitting here thinking like, and I used to, and I was younger, I used to drive by cribs and be like, what do they do? Yeah. You never did that before. You <laughs> like you ride by person. a crib though. And you be like, I wonder what them people do for a living. Yeah. And now it's like, I understand what they did because it's like, I still into the role. Now people are asking me. Yeah, so it's, I, it's I know, crazy. man, you've had an opportunity to, to talk with some dope people. I know recently uh, we were chopping up on the phone. Mm -hmm. and you were saying, like, you had lunch with Alex Hermosi. Yeah. And I was like, what? Yeah, Alex bro. Hermosi? That's crazy. I was I, I met him at an event. Um, I met him at an event. This is before I really knew who he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I met him at an event, like, a long time ago. And I was just like, I just, that man was sharp, bro. Yeah. Like, when it comes to sales and yes. things of that nature. And I paid to be in that room. Yeah. And like, and I had I had posted him on my Instagram not too long ago or whatever, and just like I'm just the way he thinks, yeah. Like the way he says, the way he just connects with people. Like yeah. when it comes to the business, man, it yeah. was a blessing just to be able to to be to be to be next to him in that room. I paid for it now, but yeah. it was worth it. <laughs> I definitely pay for this. No, show definitely not. I'm 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 a person where nine times out of ten, I'm kinda like, I can just watch somebody on YouTube and that's enough. But he's one of those people where it's like, yo, I would pay because like you yeah, know bro. it's gonna be worth it. Like, it was definitely up. worth it, man. I was just to be in that and I was literally just a fly on the wild. I was a whole bunch of people. I was a little flying a while, man. Just listen to what he was like. It was it was different, bro. Yeah, yeah. Now that's super fire, bro. So man, dude, I mean, major congratulations to you. I I love just I feel like just in that quick snapshot, we got to hear so much about how I mean, you, I knew about people being in trailers, but when you said 16, 17 people in the trailer, yeah, I'm like, bro, oh, no, that's another God, level. Bro. Like, 
three, four here. Three, yeah, the, yeah, man, it was, it, was, it was like that, bro. And I sit back and look like, dang, bro, like, can't believe I live like that. And I end up moving my grandma when I was like 13 or whatever. Then when I seen a different type of life or whatever, like, mm-hmm. for us, like, just being able to go from that to have my own room, man. So it's like, I'm very close to my family, too, yeah. man. So it's like, I grew up around a lot of love, so it's like mm-hmm. I'm super close to my family. Bro, that's so far. Uh, one of the things, I'm, I'm going to sound like I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse, uh, but it's just beautiful to me. One of the things I love is how typically sometimes people kind of fear somebody who grew up with that type of upbringing. And I'm not talking about the poverty, but the love. Mm-hmm. They think like, oh, if this person starts seeing success or they start becoming successful, they'll completely lose their self and lose their heart. But the fact that like you've you've gained the mindset, the mentality, the work ethic, the know-how, the network to become who you are today, but you haven't lost those morals, those values, all those things, which, which I mean, I was telling the team before you came in here, I was like, yo, I say I really like this dude, like yeah. straight up, you know, cause I'm like, man, I could tell, I was like, we, we even before we like had talked on the phone and stuff yeah. like that, I was like, yo, I'm able to tell like, this dude is like a good person. I like rock with good people. Yeah, I love good people, man. It's just like, right. just good, solid people, man, and like, like you speaking of the um, growing up losing yourself, it actually made me more of a giving person, bro. Because I told myself, man, I want to be a, a philanthropist, right? I give money to schools and uh, just different organizations, and I was like, I want to make as much money as I can now and spend the rest of my life giving away. Because it's like I want to leave this world empty. Yeah, it's like people want to like we hoard this money, but it's like okay, it's cool. We're gonna make it now while we young. Make it while we got the mind to think and the execution is motivation. But at the end, there got to be an exit. Yeah, and my exit is like. Helping the world become a better place. That's my exit. Yo, so that's it's like it's wow. Like people talk it. about an exit like leaving. Like when I was an Uber driver, Lyft yeah. driver. I say Uber. I was a Lyft driver. I was like, I was thinking, okay, exit is. Oh, how do I exit being a Lyft driver to like make real money? Yeah. And that's normal. But for you to say no, that's one version of exit. Yeah. But how do I exit this world, world. and like give back to people with mm-hmm. that? Like, what does that exit look like? Yeah. Hey y'all, we have some incredible, incredible news that I'm super excited about to finally announce our private tech community. Yes, yes, you heard that right. A private tech community exclusively for you all who want more than just the podcast. You want more than just the FAQs. You want to talk with tech recruiters. You want to talk with with hiring managers. You want to talk with coaches. You want to talk with people that can help with editing and rewriting your resume. Maybe you're somebody where you just want to be a part of a community where we're talking about updates of what's happening in the software industry. Y'all, this community that we've launched is also going to involve a Discord where we're going to be talking about updates in tech. We're going to be talking about companies that are hiring. We're going to be talking about upcoming tech events. So that way you don't have to miss any of the gems that I know, but not even just what I know, but the gems that friends of mine that are also in the tech industry know as well. So if you want to be a part of that community, go ahead and sign up so that way you can join us. We have a few different tiers. Ultimately, it's all tuned in for you. Oh, and last thing, also within this community, we're gonna be streaming all of our interviews with our podcast guests. So instead of you having to wait months to watch the videos later on, you will actually be able to watch the interviews in real time and ask your live questions to those guests. So make sure you join our tech community. Bro, that's so good. This man, this conversation goes so many directions. <laughs> I, I, uh, I want, I want, I want to stick to the topic because I know people, people in the comments, and I'm sure people are are enjoying this uh, that are watching this. Uh, but I want to be uh, mindful to some of the uh, the other other aspects that uh, that we need Let's to touch get on. To the good stuff. So, <laughs> so bro, so that was that was your upbringing mm-hmm. and stuff. What led you to before you even started your business? Like, what led you to tech? And like, what like what have you? Like, what did you get to do in the tech industry? So, actually, I was in the military, too, bro. So, I was- Which uh, branch? Uh, I was an Army, 63 Bravo. Oh, he, like he's a all, seaman. I was all wheel mechanic. And I'm a and Marine. I'm, oh, for real. Yeah, yeah, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, that was so, so, like, I just, I always liked the technology, bro. When I was younger, I just take, a, like, take stuff apart and put it together. Because yeah. I want to understand how things work, man. And honestly, I was like, I want to make a lot of money. So, the only thing I knew how to do was, at the time, like, looking up careers or whatever, like, engineering, accounting, doctor, lawyer, dentist- uh, you know, finance and things like that nature. So I chose the engineering route because I want to see how things operate. I yeah. like the technology and putting together and wires and connecting robots and remote control cars, taking them together. And like, how does this work? Uh, syncing things to the computer. Like, just, I was just super interested in that, man. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the world revolves itself around technology. Nothing works without technology. Yeah. And that's what kind of got me. I was just super interested in it. It's the only thing that like really captured my attention. 
Yeah, and so so you did engineering. Mm-hmm. Can you actually? Because I've just found this out about you recently. Like you actually were like coding, like you know, yeah. like some programming mm-hmm. languages and stuff. I actually got an uh, undergrad from Savannah State, and I went and got my uh, master's from North Carolina A&T. So I've done PLC programming, uh, Java, uh, Python, C plus plus. I know how to program, yeah. and I did that yeah. for like I did that for like five years after I graduated. I was just. So I went for Procter and Gamble, Johnson and Johnson, Kaiser Permanente, just doing like programming for like medical machines. So I did that for like Bruh, about five years. I know a lot of engine. I know people that have been, in- they've been software engineers for 10, 15 years and they don't know all the program languages you know. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. I, 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 and just, just learning, man. I was, I was, I remember one time, bro, I saved my company like a four, five million dollars in six months. They could never find a problem. This company been around for like 12 years. So it was like a little vision system thing where, yeah. Uh, it was able to, that was that was losing a lot of scrap rate, right? Because even in technology, right? It's like when companies produce things, a lot of money goes to goes away to scrap because you got imperformity, what, imperfection, what do you mean by scrap? and process. Scrap rate mean is like things that can't be put into the in the field can't really be produced. You may have something that there's something called quality control, right? Yeah. In engineering, that means that you check it for something, make sure there's no deformities before I sell it. It's like if you go to the store and you open up a box and there and it's defective. That means that uh, you can't use it, right? Oh yeah. So you they can't. lose. So the company's gonna lose. Money they lose on the money on because they're not. They don't. They don't have nothing to catch the material. It's so much stuff to go behind, like everything, right? If that thing, right, the camera thing, if it comes out wider or bigger or whatever, that like, they can't sell that because yeah. it's gonna be off. It's defective. So yeah. it's defective. So they throw it away. So you're losing money on that material that it takes mm-hmm. to make that. Yeah. So I created a vision system to be able to spot things before it actually came off the line. That is crazy. So, like, man, I say, I, I just, just from programming, bro, was able to like l- learn ladder logic. People was like, bro, you're a genius, bro. So, it was oh. like, I did that, man. It was, it was, it was pretty cool, bro. You so created like, that for the company that mm-hmm. you're working for? Yeah, bro. That's why I asked you about consulting, bro. And I was like, bro, I'm so good at seeing businesses and helping them thrive, bro, because I don't know. My mind just so look, understand stuff, I, man. So, you, 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 you good. So, this, this doesn't matter. <laughs> But my mind is thinking like, bruh, you could have made that, patented it, bro, and sold that junk. Bro, I understood so though. Much I, money. Man, listen, bro. I, I went try to go that route, bro, but I didn't know what I know now. I didn't yeah, have yeah, the resources yeah, I yeah. had now. Cause I bro, if I tell you I what bet I your really company did, was like Bro, what? I ended up quitting because let me tell you, I tell you the story to everybody. I swear all my wealth builder members, they know to tell the story. Bro, when I say to that company, bro, they gave me a twenty dollar gift certificate to Longhorn and I quit. I didn't come back on my lunch break. And let me tell you what I did. Everybody know this story, bro. Like this, is how I ended up quitting and stepping into yeah, the so technology this, so this world. Is, this is what allowed you. This is why you left tech. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is why so I left tech. So I left tech because I created this system for this company, right, bro? They could not figure out where. Well, they was losing millions. I'm looking at the report. They losing millions of dollars in scrap rate. This is going on for like ten years, right? So, and it was kind of a startup company too. So. I'm looking, I'm just like, bro, like, why are you not catching this stuff before it come out the That's assembly so line crazy. and they box it up, like, and like all this material, I'm checking the weight on it. How much this cost to come in the ship in? Okay, this weight cost this much. So out of this, out of say if something cost something, the weight was like, just say 800 pounds, 400 pounds going to scrap. This 800 pounds costing you ten thousand dollars. So you losing three thousand dollars for every shipment because you can't check this stuff before it hits the, before it actually hits the shelves or before it comes out the line. Yeah. So, like I said, I created it, man, and they was just like, they didn't even know that was like, and it was catching stuff, bro. So, they was able to recycle it before they was able to throw it away. Wow. They was able to rent it back through the machine before it got too far down the line, they had to throw it away. So, you saved them millions. Millions, and bro. And they gave you a $20 Man, we had an annual, we had an annual uh, like a little annual conference or recognition thing like that, and this is where the job, now that I know now, when they try to give you a raise and pat you on the back, good job. That reward system, we're, think about this. The reward system when we were younger, right? When we do something good, we get a sticker. So we want to perform that activity again and stay programmed. Yeah. So it's like when you get a pat on yes. your back at it a job, you- it makes you want to work harder. But it's like, why am I working harder to make you millions of dollars? And now I'm feeling confident, but that's their programming. Exactly. So, but me, I had a ref- I, my mind wasn't thinking like that. I'm upset. Yeah. I said, y'all could, I said, I said a million dollars, bro. Millions of dollars. Y'all gave me a $25 gift certificate. Man, when they gave me that, bro, I thought it was about to be a check or some equity yeah. or a raise or something. Let me tell you what happened, bro. On the lunch break, I, I, bro, I was just sitting at my desk. I was like, bro, I feel used, bro. Like, I'm spending hours. Yes. Like, I done gave up my weekends because I was just so passionate about 
you know, my particular job. But yeah. guess how many people in the world are so passionate about what they're doing, but you're not being rewarded for it. Yeah, that's real. You're not being rewarded for it. So, man, I go on my lunch break. I remember my manager calling me. He was like, you come back to work? I was like, nah. He was like, what you mean? I was like, nah, bro. So he was like, he felt it too, man. He said, you always say. I said, bro, I say to people millions of dollars, bro. And this is what they gave me. That's crazy. So this is what I did, right? They didn't know how to run the system. This is what I did. When I went back, I went back and turned the, the, you know, my equipment. I had my laptop. I went back and turned it in. But while it was on break, I went back to the system, bro, and I downloaded the program, put it on the flat drive, and dip. Yes. And let me yes. tell you what happened, bro. They called me. They was blowing up my phone. Yeah. But I, they, were, they were trying to say, well, we're going to do this. i like, yo, these are my resources. Oh, oh, so you you took it so they didn't even have it anymore. They didn't even have it anymore, bro. Oh. So let me tell you, they tried to double, they tried to double my salary, right? So, yeah. bro, they immediately tried to double my salary yeah. to get me to come back. But I was just like, nah. It just showed me how valuable my brain was, yes. bro. And I was like, you know what? If I was able to do this on my own, imagine if I stepped out there and be creative in this world, bro, yes. and let my brain you know, create something massive, right? Yeah. And I can change people's lives and be rewarded for it. That was the best thing that ever happened to me was them letting me know, them like underestimating my value. Yeah. Me letting somebody else determine my value. Yeah. Bro. When they did that, boy, I was so fast. They was calling, man, I said they were calling me back to back. We double my salary, want to give me a signing bonus. I said, nah. And they didn't know, they, and guess what? They were trying to say, oh, well, you know, you did this here, we gonna, man, I say, bro, all this with my technology. Exactly. All this with my mind. Say, y'all have no idea what I did. Y'all got these people that went to these Ivy League school. They don't even know what's going on, man. God, dog. Bro, bro, I, it was so it was so funny, man. When I, I left, bro, like, I know, it was so crazy how they went. I was making like 90K, 85, but they tried to double me. Yeah. 180, still said no. Yeah. But only still said no. Because then I was more happy. I'm like, I'm glad this happened to me because I probably would have stayed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I wouldn't be doing what I'm yeah, doing if, now. If they had to actually, like, let's say out the jump, they were like, so oh. So that gave me $10,000 for it. Well, I probably would have stayed. You would have been like, okay, that's, okay, that's yeah, cool. That's cool. Yeah. Dang. That's, bro, that's why, man, I, I really hope that y'all are, are, are understanding and getting from this because I always say, so there's a few different pieces. One, there are some tech companies, a lot of people that are getting into tech. I'm always saying like, yo, even entry level, don't let some of these companies play you. Some of oh, these companies man. are trying to start people at $40,000 oh, salary, $50. No, no, no. I'm like, no, even entry level, do not accept something like that. But then there's other people that will stay at a company and it's like the company's barely giving raises, barely giving incentives, barely giving bonuses. Don't settle for that. And then there's other people where it's like, you've been in this industry for hella long. That's why we say with Tech is New Black, breaking the tech, scaling tech, start your own tech business. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, yo, at some point, at some point you might be the, and everyone doesn't need to start a business, but it's if you're the type of person where you're like, okay, cool, I'm making a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, but I'm realizing I'm making this company yes, millions, millions of dollars, which is a real thing. When you're making a couple hundred thousand, understand that nine times out of ten, you're making the company relatively ten, ten times, times as yep, much. Ten exactly. Times as ten much, times yep. as much as what they're paying you. So at some point, not saying rush out there and do it, but at some point, once you truly understand your skill set. You have a good network and you know what it is you want to do. Take those same skills that you've gotten and put it into something else. And so I love I love that that component that, uh, that you talked about. And yeah, bro, I'm, I'm happy that, that that happened too. I did too, bro. Best stuff. thing that happened to me. Bro, that's that's a crazy the, story. The worst situation, what I thought was like, man, but I just said, bro, I just like, I feel so used, bro. I'm like, yo, I spent, oh, I gave, I'm thinking about the experience I gave up on missing Family events and That's my grandma wanted me to come here. Bro, I was twenty five dollar gift certificate, bro. They seen a the look on my face when that man shook my hand, bro. I couldn't even look him in his face. I felt so used, bro. That's not to tell. I tell this story all the time, bro. People that was there when it was like I quit, and I was like, bro, you quit. I said, bro, when I tell people what happened, because this happened back in two thousand and fifteen. Yeah, and so everybody knew that my friends were well, because everybody like, bro, you about to quit your engineering job? You quit? I'm like, yeah, I quit. Like, I'm not worried about that. Like, I'm, I'm more excited. Like, I just created this with my mind, man. Y'all got it. Yeah, bro. I love that you took that from there, bro. That's that's the biggest, like. <laughs> bro, I, they were, my manager even, they were like, it was my flat drive. They were like, they're going to call the police. I said, well, and do what? What are they going to ask like, you? Oh, he stole something that he made. That he made. It's my flat drive. on his thing. Yeah, like, my brain, my it. intellect. I ain't write no SOP. See, that was slow, bro, because it's like nobody couldn't even do what I did because they were so excited about what I was doing. They ain't even, I didn't even have a chance to write an SOP you know, oh. uh, to be able to somebody can follow me and know what to do because it was too complex. Yeah. So I really could have. I, what I know now, everybody was like, Ty, if I know I know now, oh, bro, I'll create a patent. Yeah. You'll have to spend some millions to get this back. Yeah, yeah. See, it was it like, yo, and I imagine the company probably ain't around no more because they were just losing so much money. <laughs> <laughs> they were losing so much money, man.
<laughs> Yo, that's the villain origin story. <laughs> that's what that Real, sound like. Give no. me that. Hey, what's good? I'm Eric Bates, video producer and strategist here at Tech is the New Black. And if you're interested in what our guest is talking about and want to do data analytics, software development, or cybersecurity, we need you to go ahead and check out Pivot Tech. They're a highly awarded virtual tech bootcamp that offers mentorship and career placement. And we've partnered with them to offer our audience a discount of up to $300 off. That's right, $300. So use the referral code Tech is the New Black and keep us posted on your journey. <laughs> oh, bro, that's wild, bro. I, I salute that. Oh, we yeah. love that so much. So, all right, so boom. So, so that happened. So you were like, okay, I need to go out and, and um, realize, okay, your value, realizing your knowledge, what, what you what you have and what you had. You're like, okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and start my own thing. Mm -hmm. Was So what ended up leading to your business now, which is Wealth Builders? So I was, I don't I only knew at the time, like, processes and how things work, but I... I started going to networking events yeah, and started like seeing people that look like me and, you know, had all the freedom in the world and making fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a month, yeah. like multimillionaires. So I'm like, what y'all got going on? Like what they do, whatever. Yeah. So that's when I got into finances, understood like, like more in the, and I already had the tech background. Yeah. So I started like, um, un looking at understanding finances mm -hmm. about credit and real estate and e-commerce. That I, I always I always knew how to make money, but I didn't know how to manage money, and I didn't know how to grow money. Mm, so yeah. I understand to build wealth, right? You can, everybody can make money. Yeah. Anybody can make money, but do you know how to manage money? Do you know how to turn ten thousand to a thousand dollars, or a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars? Ninety percent of the world don't know how to do that. Yeah. So it was like those are the people that created wealth. When I watched how the people start leveraging credit, getting the vintage credit, I started learning how to trade. And at that moment, I was like, okay. And I was a part of other like programs and whatnot. And I was like, okay. If I'm watching how they operate, but I was like, they don't really, there's no really service that really change somebody's lives or whatever. And I still had those morals of want to change people's lives. And that changed my life, bro. And I literally, like, when I quit my job, bro, I swear I probably had like $6 to my name, bro. Because I was just like, you know, at the time, even though it was a lot of money, I got rent bills, trying to help my family out. So I didn't have a lot of money saved. Yeah, but that's it was not like, 6000 be going like It was that. gone. Nah, I probably spent 6000 a week. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, uh, but I understood that. I needed to invest in myself more. Mm -hmm. So I took that and I took that and it was like, you know what, let me invest in myself because I understood the value that I had. So let me learn more. Mm -hmm. Let me gain more knowledge. So that's what I did, bro. So I, I learned it myself and I applied, I applied it. Mm -hmm. And when I applied it, I seen what I was able to execute and the results I got from applying and uh, getting my credit fixed. I ain't no fix all everybody in my family credit. Bruh. Getting them um seven fifty, eight hundred credit scores. Yo. And I um, end up flipping a property with my friend from leveraging credit. Mm -hmm. And got a credit card, like 40K. Me and my friend, they all talked me how to do it. He got 40K. We went and bought a property for 50, put $20,000 in and sold it. I got my money back. I got my money back, paid the car back down. I had like a free $30,000. And I was like, oh, bro, this is it. Yeah. Oh, I know in my life made that much money so fast. You said it was 30000 That's what I made profit. Yeah. After oh, we sold man. the house. So I'm like, I'm paying my car back down. My credit score done shot up. I don't, I don't, um, I was 30 in my pocket. Oh, man, trying to keep going, huh? Yeah. And I started, that's when I got into, like, heavy into finances and understanding how money works. Mm -hmm. And then I end up, uh, was like, okay, if I can create a program, because most of the people got money problems. And it's like being in the tech world, it's about solutions. Yeah. Everything is about solutions. There's problems in the world. Let me create something that'll solve that problem. Yeah, that's what an engineer is. That's what an engineer, what problem solves. So my yeah. mindset at the time was, bro, the world needs money. Yeah. People was used to be like me. There are people out there right now that's probably watching that grew up like me. Mm -hmm. They don't. They didn't have a silver spoon, right? Parents probably living paycheck to paycheck. Don't nobody know anything about credit, right? So imagine if it changed my life. How many people that can come behind me? Because it's like the quickest way to get to the next level is find somebody that's coming back from where you're trying to go. I don't been in the worst situations, mm -hmm. so it's like with me going through this process and all this knowledge and experience, it just clicked. Yeah. And I started like I already knew how to program. I started putting creating uh like uh using technology to create like uh templates and a lot of automation and man I started like signing people up to you know promoting and whatever and and the automation I created with my mind the process I created my whole system by myself from programming because I knew how to program 
Yeah. So I was like, so I didn't have to it. get a program. Bro, I like, did, I bro. I didn't know. I, I, so the people, I did have relationships in a programming world. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if I got stuck somewhere, I would call a friend. Yeah. And be like, bro, can you help me with this? Oh, yeah, we're cool. We'll link up, get on Zoom or something like that, bro. And code and it's in no working. And it's thinking, no, I had, put the, I had put the company together. Yeah. And that's why I named it the Wealth Builders because it's like my mentor, the child, Tyler the Tyler, she was like, yo, Ty, you're not only a motivation or whatever, you help people build wealth. Because yeah. I was like, I could teach anybody, no matter where you're from, finances. I could teach you how to go from, you know, negative, bad credit to having this. I could teach you how to make your first thousand dollars. I could teach you how to, I could change your mindset and go from how to make, how to just make money, but how to manage your money and how to grow your money. Yeah. So like I said, with with the technology piece, I was able to put that on a platform, put that in on the internet in the digital mm-hmm. space, and have people all around the world to come to this platform to help them go from where they are to where they're trying to meet them where they are, no matter where you are in your life right now. Yeah. If you're making thirty thousand dollars a year, you want to get the fifth. If you got bad credit, you want to, you know, leverage credit, you want to get into business credit, you want to learn how to trade, you want to get into real estate. I was like, this is a digital space that we in, so why not create an online educational platform that people all around the world can have access to? Yo, so it makes so much sense now why it's called wealth builders because it's like in order to build wealth like you can you can build riches like you can get rich rich. but in order to build wealth all of those pieces you named are needed like you you can't just be making money you have to have some understanding of money management Mm -hmm. you have to have some understanding as to how to okay you made money now how can you take that money you made and flip it so it can make more money how can you invest how can you do all these different pieces so you're saying that wealth builds uh wealth uh, builders that that it touches on those different components yes it gives you the mindset too yeah, because you got all, people, out, bro. People I know we speak on mindset, mindset, but that's true. Because you got to have a mindset in order to apply the information. Yeah, you got to have the the execution, the discipline to mm-hmm. actually sit down and execute these skills. Mm-hmm. Because it's like people don't understand. Like we could go to school for eighteen years and not know nothing about that subject, but somebody teaches us and we advance. But yeah. what, that advancement is the you got to think about it. I'm going to say something, right? It's an advancement in somebody else's life. You advancing yourself, but it's at the end of the day. Your skill you learn is going to advance somebody else like the person who owned that business you're working for. Their life is advanced because of the skill set you learn. Yeah, that's real. So, but we don't take we don't take our own we don't take that same psychology and advance our own life. That's real. And I was like, let me advance my life, and now guess what I'm doing? I'm creating financial freedom for not only myself, my family, but for other people too. Yeah. And people, when when I when I was able to get people to realize that this is how I was able to create so many successful people, millionaires, multiple six figure earners, bro. Yeah. From that mindset. Yeah. So is is so so with wealth builders is it a it's a so so I know you have a website for it you have an app for it as well mm-hmm. is it like a uh, like a one on one coaching is it a group coaching is it like a, a self paced thing where people are able to like learn specific avenues of wealth building or like what does it look like essentially so basically it's actually like a university bro like we have educators shout out to my educators man we got some of the best credit educators. Forex, drop shipping, real estate. So a person can like sell paces like school where yeah. you get online courses. We have live webinars every single week. Yeah. We have a quizzes to make sure that you retain the information. Mm-hmm. So if you take a credit course, I'm gonna let you take a quiz. I need to make sure you retain the information. Yes. Yeah. So that you can apply it, right? Yeah. And on Forex and learning how to trade, that's a passive income, learning the skill set to turn you know, two thousand to twenty thousand dollars. I want you to learn it. We want I, I wanna make sure you learn the skill set. So you have classes and courses and actually uh, people that you can work with 24-7. The mm-hmm. reason why I created so many successful, successful people, mentorship is about holding somebody accountable. Mm-hmm. It's not about me telling you what to do. The course should tell you that, but it's about me holding you accountable of the information you learn. Okay. And that's what really creates successful people, bro, because somebody has to hold you accountable, man. Yeah. And so that's what our program does is it's, it's self-paced. You can do it at your own time. You got somebody that's there 24-7 that can answer your questions for you. Um, you got live calls you can hop on and ask people with 800 credit scores how to remove certain stuff on your credit report. People that's making six figure, you actually have to be able to talk to experts whenever you need to. Yeah. And the people that are teaching the classes, I talk all of them. Uh, I created a program and taught those and those skills when mm-hmm. I learned, and now they change their life. And they help thousands of people around the world change their life. 
Well, that's so fire, dude. W- one of the, the reasons I, I think there's a lot of value that I want um, our audience to take from this is that, of course, we talk a lot about, I mean, everything that we talk about is essentially like, you know, breaking into tech and scaling your income. But one of the things the team and I have been talking about a lot behind the scenes is like, man, we need to start having conversations of what people can do now that you're making that money either what you can invest it in. Uh, And I'm not the investment guru. I'm not the financial guru at all. But it's like, yo, bringing people on who can speak to, okay, how can you scale that money? How can you grow your skill set outside of your job that brings you like value in your life outside of just you working these jobs in tech, which these jobs in tech are Mm -hmm. fire. Uh, Again, if you have a situation like he had, run real quick from that company. (laughs) But it's like, yo, what, what comes next? And so one of of the things I love about this conversation is that I thought our first time having a conversation like this with somebody, it was going to be someone who didn't even understand the tech industry. But it's like your story is like a full, a full like 180 where it touches on all of it. It touches on like, okay, you understand the tech industry. You built your platform, your tech based platform Platform. Mm -hmm. yourself off the muscle of those things. And so it's like there's so much value for people who, again, you're 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 making money. Let's say you're somebody who you're not in tech yet, and you're like, hey, you know, I'm I'm interested in learning how to learning how to uh, uh, ha- like build credit, whether mm-hmm. it's your own credit or somebody. is you creating some type of credit business or yep. something that can help your friends and family like his, or if you're somebody who's really interested in real estate and doing it the right way and not being a person who's losing money in real estate. Yeah. And so it's like, man, there's so much value um, in this uh, for our audience. I love this so much, dude. So, bro, so so you've been in this, you've been killing it. And what are some of the the ups and downs that you've experienced? Because, I mean, you, you, you've been successful, but I'm sure there have been, like, some some ups and downs in entrepreneurship, you know. And, and also really, like, you know, also having, like, a, a tech-based business. Like, what, what are, like, some of the, the experiences you've had? So even with entrepreneurship, there are ups and downs. Bro, I lost a million dollars in 2020. You said a million? A million dollars, like $947,000. I talked about in the interview with one of my friends on his podcast, bro. Just uh, dealing with technology, uh, people managing your businesses, uh, yeah. things, got accounts, they take it from you. Uh, people not looking at the software, and you got people. It, and one thing about the business that I was in, right, we pay, we pay our residual income because I was like, okay, I want to also, while you're learning, be able to earn money while you're learning because you change your life. And now when you change your life, you can go help your cousin, your brother and sister and whoever else that you care about yeah. get out of their financial situation. Yeah. So that was this issue going on in, uh, with the software, man, that was actually paying out people money that weren't supposed to go out. Oh, so wow. So I'm giving out, I'm li- not saying, you know, people say they lose money. Like, yeah, I could have had it. No. I had it and I gave it you away. Literally, <laughs> I lost literally the had, money. and I literally was like giving charity away for like nine months. And I bet they weren't saying nothing, man. Oh, no, they weren't. Oh, so what caught it was, I was like, I was like, Brian, I know I ain't making that much money, so I'm not, I'm, I'm not seeing ninety k leaving every month. Yeah. So I was just like, something ain't right, man. Man, when I went and did the audit, man, I was in tears, bro. Like I was, Ooh. I was so sad, man. But. I ain't gonna lie, I was sad for like five or six days. I'm calling my mentors, bro. I'm really depressed. I'm talking about a million dollars, bro. Like, yes, I'm thinking I'm about to have to sell. I think I'm about to lose my business. I'm about to sell the car, sell everything, man. But honestly, though, we're kind of like that ups and downs, though. But one thing about, I understand about life, man, mindset, right? There could have been two experiences came from that. Mm-hmm. that I could have quit and went back to what I was, got, what I was trying to get away from, right? Yeah. I could have went back to, Something I could have went backwards in life, yeah, and I I could not have had an impact on having. I could not have been doing the things I'm doing now. Probably wouldn't be talking to you right now, right? Mm-hmm. So that's one experience that could have came with that. I said if I quit, this way can happen. But if I keep going, I can learn from my mistakes. I have the foundation because I built it from scratch. Yeah, that foundation is still there, and I can build off the existing foundation and continue to make the impact that I want. Mm-hmm. And I I re- and I was like, when you get able to have those type of options. Option A, option B, and I can look at those. I'm not going to choose option A because I don't want to go back there. I know what that felt like to be in that situation again, so why would I do that? But I could learn from my mistakes, monetize some of my experience, yeah, teach people how not to do what I did and put certain things in place and also continue to keep my business and keep impact. I just got to go back to what I was doing. I didn't mind reversing a little bit on back my own built foundation not somebody else's foundation mm-hmm. but my own foundation yeah so i educate people and I teach people like create your foundation first mm-hmm. whatever it looks like to you so that if anything entrepreneurship you're gonna have your ups and downs mm-hmm. it's gonna happen it's not a matter of how um uh how it's a matter of when yeah it might not be to the point where you lose everything but there are Ooh. things that can happen 
Yeah. But you need to be able to have certain, uh, build that foundation, right? And just build mm. it back up. Yeah. People try to skip the steps, saying you just like giving like when athletes go broke. I never understood when they say athletes go broke, but if somebody's handing you two million dollars, yeah, and you don't know how you made it, you're gonna go broke because if you spend it, you don't know how to get it back. Yeah, but if somebody who made it, say you, you built your podcast from scratch, if you had to do it all over again, you could because you could just gonna go back to what how you started building in the first exactly. place because you had that foundation, you had yeah. that experience, and you had those skill sets. That's real. And I was able to bounce back, bro, yeah. and continue my company thriving, keep everything, and I made the money back. Yeah, but that's that's I, that's so good. Like top to bottom is one. Those those of y'all who end up creating an app, or you have an app, or you have a website, whatever it is, I think that's value in making sure that you don't trust the technology so much that you don't check it. Yeah, you gotta check the technology. You gotta check. Ooh, you gotta check it because it could malfunction, and hopefully yes. your stuff don't malfunction the way that. Yeah, I'm all, that thing malfunction bad. That's crazy. Rhea just pointed at me like you need to be checking stuff too. <laughs> Cause no, what happened? Uh, she asked me recently. So we just started a newsletter, uh, a free newsletter, and she asked me. She was like, she was like, what does the newsletter look like? I said, I said, oh, I haven't seen it yet. She said, how, how come you haven't seen it? She, she was like, how do you know it looks good? I said, uh, I said, oh, AI made it. I said, we just we just had AI make it. And she was like, so she got on to me. She was like, yo, you can't be trusting AI like that. Yeah, man. And I'm like, yo, I trusted true. the technology that it was operating the way it needed to. But hey, man. It's still technology, so it's yeah. like you still should check behind it. When I check behind it, I found what it was. And I had another thing about it, bro. The reason why I wasn't so bad, mad at myself, I had to take accountability. Yeah, that's right. I had to take account. Accountability is what made me get back in line because we can blame the world. We can blame this and blame the parents, blame the people around you. But sometimes you have to take accountability. And when you take accountability, it's like I can't blame about myself because I could have prevented this. Yeah. So with that taking accountability, I stopped blaming everything else around me and looked at myself in the mirror. Ty, this happened because of you not being, you, I ain't going to say not being lazy, but not having eyes on certain things and trusting things. No, if it's your business, Treat it like it's your business. Yeah. You should have your eyes on every single thing if this if this is your business. Yeah. And that's what happened. I paid. Guess what? The lack of me not knowing that and not doing that, I paid for it. I paid for that experience. Yeah. It was a heavy experience. Yeah. But now, guess what I'm doing? I had a mindset. Now, I'm monetizing from it. When I told you I want to get into consulting, this is why. Yeah. Because I was ah. like, that's why I say, bro, I, could, I done been through so much that I could help any company, help anybody do anything. Yeah. Because I just understand how systems and programs work. Yo, bro, that's so fire. Ah, bro, that's crazy. That bro, you bounce back. I love it though. Yeah, like man, that's so crazy that you bounce because that, that would have tore a lot of people up. Man, I th- bro, I thought it was end all be all, but yeah. <laughs> it hurt, man. Yeah, but bro, like bet. having that man and just having that mindset and that growth, man, and it's just the yeah. execution. And honestly, bro, I honestly thought about the people, bro. I was like, bro, if I lose this business, bro, what's gonna happen to these thousands of people, bro? Like, I'm thinking about like their future and yeah. all these people are gonna use this platform to change their life. And the impact I want to make in the world, all that stuff just goes out the window. I'm not about to yeah. let that happen. At this point, it becomes bigger than you. Yeah, that's real. It's big. At this point, yeah. it becomes bigger. Like with this podcast, you got so many people who believe in you, people watching you, viewers, you creating jobs for people. You can't, even if you wanted to quit, you couldn't. Yeah, no, that's real. Like you got to still get up and go, bro, because at this point, once you get to a certain level in life, it honestly is not about you no more. Now, that's super real, dude. So, bro, so my last question that I, I have for you, man, bro, where do you see the future of? Really, the future of, of technology, the future of business and technology, like where do you see it going? You got to stay on top of the stuff that's going on right now, man. Yeah. Technology, you have to know. Even while we talk about AIs, you got to know about all this stuff. Man, that stuff is taking over. You need to be aware that it's replacing jobs, right? In California, I just read in 2026, they're going fully electric. Yeah. You know, the first thing that came to my mind, the robot, the, 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 rope, the, the plants that manufacture uh, mechanical vehicles, it's about to be obsolete. Absolute, right? Ooh, so that true. means people buy, you know how many plants all the people that work there. All, it, plants employ 40, 50 percent of, of, of damn near the world, damn near. It'd be Ooh. thousands of people to work at these plants. Just imagine if these if there are no mass production, hundreds of millions, th- hundreds of thousands of millions of cars, if they stop their production, you know how many people lose their job? Because robots can do robots, if it's something that can be performed over and over repeatedly, you can you can create a robot to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's something that's repetitive, the same routine every single time. Man, that's the first thing that came to my mind. Like, people are in trouble. Yeah. If you do not stay up on technology or get into the digital space or something with technology, you're going to be left behind. Yeah. It's going to end the, the wealth gap going to really widen. Yeah. Because the yeah, people who yeah, on really top is. of the tech is going gonna, is gonna to change, right? So, even with me, like, uh, Synthesis, the little video, uh, bro, AI so crazy right now, bro. Like, one of my homeboys got uh, somebody created a video of him 
like a real video. It looked just like him, but it wasn't him. It wasn't him. To yeah. scam people, bro. Yeah. I said, yo, technology is crazy. I'm using Mid Journey to create uh, images and uh, logos. Uh, uh, I think it's synthesis to create like videos to be able to. Let me tell you the bro, how so scary just the bro. idea of somebody making a video of you. You and it and really it looks just like you. You would have to like, like look at the pixels to really know that. Like when you do, you can see a little bit, but if they just standing still, you wouldn't know the difference. It's like, yo, what's up? It's me, such and such. Yo, I do X, Y, and Z, and people going bro. They gonna believe, it. especially you got know the in your space, man. But I, I'm thinking like now, how how's, how's helping me take my business to the next level? Now I'm thinking, okay, like Chat GP, you could program. I'm putting Chat GP. I'm gonna get everybody some game, right? You put Jet P, if you got like a business or whatever, and you're trying to explain your business to somebody, train Chat GP to do it. So when they come to your page, you can have a better conversion because your Chat GP is selling them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Without having is. to talk to a human person. It's like your own sales team on steroids. No, for real. That's exactly yeah. what it is. So I'm like, yo, I'm using this because if I'm getting 30,000 visits a month, and just imagine I got, this is replacing my sales team. So everybody comes to answering all the questions, doing everything. So at this point, you ready, to, you ready to join the program or you ready, you got all your questions answered, you ready to proceed with the transaction. Yeah. Or using AI to create a video to explain everything. So you tying those two together, bro, it's gonna actually help companies now. That's why I tell everybody, bro, get your stuff together, get your finances together, stay learning, be yeah. around like-minded people, find people that you can learn from and you can grow with because it's gonna save you.